hello illumination summit once again i welcome you to another exciting video and today we are looking at an amazing concept walking in dominion the bible calls us sons of god and one of the major attributes of sons is having the capacity and the same abilities that is present in the father because everything produces after its kind so the son of a lion we have the futures and the capacity of a lion likewise the son of a sheep will have the potential of a sheep the son of a goat will have the potential of a goat in the same way the bible calls us the sons of god as sons of god we carry the same gene with our father we carry the same potentials the same abilities the same hidden power as god our father how come most christians don't walk in dominion how come a lot of times challenges and circumstances of life batter christians from side to side and they live their lives in complaint and murmuring just like the children of israel in the wilderness the reason is because a lot of people are yet to come to the conscious realization that the potential of divinity resides within humanity. The power of God lies in man, especially those who have declared for Christ. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 5, 17, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now that creature is a blend of divinity and humanity. That means when a man declares for God, there is a seed of divinity impacted in his life. The duty of every son is to watch and nurture that seed. That seed is the secret to your walking in dominion. That seed is the secret to your exploit in life. The seed of divinity. Now, it is very important for you to have an awareness of this truth. Because where the devil defeats believers is not in the outside it's not in the field the battlefield of life it is is in the mind because the mind is the first point of contention the mind is the first point of conception as well and the mind is the first point of accomplishment so whatever you cannot perceive and receive in your mind you cannot receive in your life that's why he says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the thoughts you have concerning yourself play a major role in your walking in dominion. The thoughts you have about God, one. Secondly, the thoughts you have about yourself. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, Jesus spent very few minutes healing the sick opening the blind eyes, raising the dead, he was very brief. It didn't take him so much time. Now, but the same Jesus spent hours teaching his disciples and teaching the multitude because he wanted to illuminate their minds. You see, the mind is the most important aspect of your life. Even for you to believe in Christ, you need your mind. For you to be saved, you have to believe. And for you to believe, you need your mind. So you see, faith is an expression of your mind. It's a manifestation of belief, which comes from the mind. Now, that's why Jesus took days, on one particular occasion, he took days to teach the multitude. And he said, they have continued with me for many days. Give them something to eat. The disciples said, send them to the town to buy so he said no they've been with me for some days they don't have that strength so imagine the master allocating a few minutes to healings and miracles but giving days to teach and impact the mind of men now that shows you how much value how much importance god puts in developing the mind as a child of god we have exceeding promises in christ everything you can think of but until you can develop your mind to handle the truth of god you can never handle them in life 
and in reality. So it all begins from your mind. See yourself as a child of God. See yourself as a new creature. See yourself as a manifestation of divinity. See yourself as God's replica. That is who we are. The reason you are left behind after salvation is to exercise dominion on earth. Jesus said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, how would that be accomplished? Who will make that happen? Not the angels. No, they have their role. It is the sons of God. And you find this in Romans chapter 8. You read down from verse 19. You see, the earnest expectation of the creature awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, what that implies is the world, the earth, the planet is waiting for the sons of God to bring down the will of the Father to the realm of humanity. It will take sons to bring down the Father's mandate and establish it on earth. What is the will of the Father? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So you see, the creature, creatures are waiting, the creation is waiting, the world is waiting. The world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. If you are in Christ, you are a son of God, and the stage is set for the manifestations of your exploit. What you need to do is understand and believe. Embrace your potential. Embrace the reality of your power in Christ. At one point, Paul said, I can do all things, not just some, no. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Your ability to do the supernatural comes from your connection with Christ. He said in John chapter 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. If I abide in you, you abide in me, you bring forth fruit and your fruit will abide. Now this fruit talks of manifestations of exploit. As long as you are connected to Christ, you are wired for exploit. Let that truth sink into your mind. And then, in a matter of time, it will manifest in your life. I want to drop three keys on how to walk in dominion. Just three. Number one is the fundamental, the most important. We've talked about believing. Now, you have to speak. If you are going to walk in dominion, you must speak. Because the Bible calls us the image of God and the likeness of his person. We are made in God's image. So, if you want to know how to operate in dominion, you have to sit back. And watch how God operates in dominion. Very important as a child of God. You have to sit back and study the Father's activities. You have to sit back and study the Father's exploits in order to initiate your own exploits. Jesus said, I do nothing except that which I see my Father do. So the exploit of Christ was a manifestation of his understanding of how his Father works in exploits. How does God work in exploit? He speaks the word. He said, there is nothing I'll do if I don't reveal it to my servant, the prophet. Now, that means there is, God does nothing except by the power of his word. Check the way he created the universe. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by the word. Genesis chapter 1 says, and God said, and God said, and he, keep, he kept saying, and everything he said manifested. So the fundamental tool for divine creation is words. God works with his words. God creates with the words of his mouth. How does God make life beautiful for his children? By speaking into their life. So you find words like, you are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation. You are the image of God. You are gods, and all you are the sons of the Most High God. You find words like this. Now, God speaks those words into our life in order to instill the power of divinity in you. Because, you see, the Word of God carries the life of God. So every time it enters you, the life of God enters you. If you must walk in dominion, you must learn how to speak. You must learn how to speak to God. You must learn how to speak to the devil. You must learn how to speak to circumstances and then you must learn how to speak to yourself. So the life of exploit is a life of constant declaration. A life of exploit is a life of speaking. There is a strong correlation between words and exploit. You have to say it. And if you keep saying it, you'll see it. 
What you desire concerning your finance, you have to say it. What you do desire concerning your health, you have to keep speaking it. What do you desire concerning your home, you have to keep saying it. That's how God works. He keeps saying it. He keeps saying it. After a while, it becomes all the reality you know. The power of words. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, in fact, he took an oath. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you. That's like Jesus saying, I swear. Verily, verily. When a Jewish man says, verily, verily, that is, what he's trying to say is, I take a solemn oath. So Jesus took a solemn oath. He took a vow that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. And shall not doubt in his heart. Shall have whatsoever he has declared. If you will say to this mountain, be thou removed. So God does not expect you to cry about your problems. Because mountains symbolize problems, challenges, unpleasant situations. God doesn't want you to cry about those issues. He doesn't say cry about them. He didn't say call about them. He didn't say um, 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 complain about them. No. God said, speak to your mountain. Speak to your mountain. The mountain has ears. Now, but when you speak to your mountain, they don't just move. Okay? If you check the words of Christ carefully, the mountain don't just want to move. He said, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart, that's the key. That's where the emphasis lies. So a lot of people say to their mountains, speak to their situations, but in a short while they begin to doubt. Is it true? Will it really, will it, will it really work? Am I really healed? I still have those symptoms. The doctor said, the report said, the scan said, Eventually, they end up doubting, and then the mountain stands to resist them. Because, you see, when you speak to the mountain, it doesn't move in, in, immediately. What the mountain does is wait and observe you, if you are doubting or if you are believing. So Jesus said, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, and you don't doubt, then the mountain have no choice but to obey. If you don't stand by your words if you don't believe your own words the mountain will not believe your words if you don't take your words seriously no situation of life will take your words seriously so god takes his words in fact the word of god he said i've exalted my word above all my name god takes his words seriously his word does not fall to the ground the word of God is the integrity of God. It's God's integrity. He doesn't compromise his word. Now, we should be like that because we are sons of God. Everything you say, expect to see. Everything you declare, expect to receive. This is how it works. As you begin to learn to speak and to watch, remember I said watch and pray. So when you are praying, you are also watching to see those things which you've declared come to pass. You are watching, you are observing, you are believing. You are standing firm. He said, after all, stand. So when you have spoken concerning that issue, concerning your fruitfulness, concerning your business, concerning the peace of your home, when you, after you have spoken, stand in faith. And then the mountain have no choice but to move. Number three, the third key to working in dominion is gratitude. After you have believed, after you have spoken, after you have faith and you keep standing, you believe, the next thing you need to do is to start appreciating God for the results of your declaration. Now, let me tell you this. The things you are grateful for will naturally be attracted to you in life. The things you are grateful for will naturally come to you. They will come to you easily. If you are grateful for peace, you will keep having peace. If you keep being grateful for favor, it's only a matter of time. Favor will keep showing up in your life. If you are grateful for health, you will keep having divine health. It's a fundamental principle that works all the time. And then, gratitude is the highest expression of your faith. The highest manifestation of faith is not prayers. No, it's praise. It's gratitude. Now, when you've made your decree, and then you come to that place where you believe God cannot fail, and your word cannot come back to you. 
according to his words. Once you come to that realization, what do you do? You begin to appreciate him. You begin to thank God. Now that is the high, that is the peak of faith. Thanking God for something you are yet to see. Because you already believe he has done it in the realm of the spirit. Now as you begin to praise God for the things you have declared, it is only a matter of time. Those same things will begin to manifest in your life. The circle of prayer is never complete until it ends in praise. The circle of prayer is never complete until it results in your praising God. So when you've prayed, when you've declared, when you've spoken to your situation, you believe, you kept, you, you, you are standing, the next thing to do is to begin to appreciate God, begin to be grateful. As you begin to express your gratitude, Heaven become committed to ensure whatever you've said, whatever you've declared, come to pass in your life. This is the fundamental principles to walking in dominion, having your desires accomplished and receiving those things which you long for in life. I pray as you begin to walk with these principles that the light of God will elevate you to the peak of dominion in life and destiny. Illumination Summit once again. Until the next video, stay well, stay healthy, peace.